continue to do this. We have garnered support from people all over the world uh, with the effort that we have put forward. It is not just Herman Albert and I. No, uh, we could not have done this. We could not do it uh, by ourselves. We have been able to get people on board. Again, like I say, uh, people like Amnesty International, Amnesty International, uh, National Religious uh, Organization Against Torture and the Craft, and, uh, you know, ACLU. Uh, we uh, have teams of lawyers working. We have psychologists. We have doctors. Uh, we have a lot of grassroots, uh, grassroots and non-grassroots people. Uh, working along with us, Every, everyone sees now that prison uh, is something that is uh, tantamount to slavery, and they want they want to do what they can to kind of snub this out. And I think we have to agree. We have to uh, we have to work with them. We have to work with ourselves in order to achieve this. And uh, this is our goal, and this is what we're supposed to do. And uh, I, I I I noticed that it's it's hot in here, and people are uh, you know beginning to familiar out, but I do want to save some time to give more time. I would love to hear from you. Uh, any questions that you want to ask me relative to, you know, this particular issue, feel free to do so. But I would rather really hear from you. You got a boy's eye view, view of uh, our story, where we stand today. And uh, by the way, I do believe Alvin will get out of prison, despite the fact that the state of Louisiana is doing its best to make sure or to try to make sure that he don't get out. We'll show that Alvin or uh, Woodfox will get out of prison. And this will happen in the not too distant future. Of course, a whole lot of time has passed, uh, and uh, Alvin is not getting any younger. But the, the point is just that we have uh, got to the point where we have got the attention of, of the system, and uh, not just in Louisiana, but we got, this, we got uh, the attention of those people in, in Washington, D.C., and other people uh, around the world. And this is where we are. But your questions uh, about anything that I say, or questions about things that I do not say, they are welcome. And uh, right now, if it's okay with, with Brad and, and this government, we can open this floor up for questions and answers, if that's all right. Texas. I just say Austin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are no other place in Texas 
that I would live except Austin. You know, Austin is, they say keep Austin here. Austin is a province in, in, in Texas, but it's not a, a Austin. Uh, we have a question down here. Mr. King, yes. I'm wondering, uh, in the effort that you've been undertaking all these years, uh, have you had any success, or can you describe the success that you've had, uh, converting uh, those within the prison system? Uh, I, I'm talking about wardens and, and others uh, to to begin to challenge the problems with this with the system and to, uh, are, are there any converts? I believe so. I think there are, but not any converts uh, to the point where it will make a difference or, or, or could make a difference. I think you would have to convert the entire state in order, or you have to, in order to, uh, to yeah, you would have to convert the entire staff in order to make a difference. In fact, you know, many people think that today prisons are, you know, um, are better than they were 30, 40 years ago. They are worse um, than they were 30, 40 years ago because <clears throat> during the time in which I first spoke of, um, a person can go to prison or be brought to prison or taken to prison and they had an opportunity to be released from prison. Uh, during the time in which I speak of, again, that there were only one prison in Louisiana. And um, there was another place called the Quincy, which was considered a uh, young, young, you know, a, a juvenile prison. Now there are 12. Uh, and at that time, you only had about maybe eight to 10,000 inmates. Now you got nearly 40, 50,000 just in Louisiana alone. And uh, nationwide, during the time in which I you know, spoke of the early 70s, you had less than 300,000 uh, people nationwide uh, in prison. But now you got, like I say, a record, they got it on record that uh, you have not two and a half million. Of course, that's a conservative estimate. But this is how it has replicated since that time. And so, we, if, uh, you know, if we have had any success in probably educating, uh, you know, some of the wars and was not. No, I think in Angola, we haven't had too much success. Of course, yes. Uh, Herman and Al, while in prison, and you know, because of who they were, yes, uh, they know who they were and they respect them. But, you know, you could disrespect me, get me out, send me out of prison. I, 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 could, I don't have to have your respect. You know, disrespect me and get me out of the prison. My, my point is this, that I, I don't, you know, if I had a charge of being respected and disrespected uh, and, and a charge of being in prison, the charge would be one thing, you know. Disrespect me and send me out of prison. You don't have to like me, get me out of prison. That's, that's the main thing. So what I'm saying is this, that no, it hasn't happened. Um, there are people who may like what we are doing. Some more may like what we are doing. Uh, Mm -hmm. Some of them might even believe that we may make their job easier down the line. But then there are others and more on the other side who believe that their job uh, uh, get higher because they become one with their job. The fact that they elected to do the job initially uh, says a lot. It says that, you know, the thing in which brought them there initially is the thing that will keep them there. And I think it's an economic. And I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, an economic fact is the reason or give you a legitimate reason to act immoral against people. No, I'm not saying that. What I am telling you is that in the light of survival, people a lot of times forget about morality. So, no, we haven't had a lot of people, you know, who, you know, who, who have, uh, while they hear us and they may agree with us, and they may call one of us aside and say, what you doing? Okay, I like that. But as far as becoming part of the, the struggle to undermine and undercut this, no, I don't know. And if they did, they would not be in Angola or any other prison for long because they would get rid of it. All right, thank you. 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 Th
Are there any former wardens or, or the like that are no longer part of the system that are now out there voicing as you are? I don't, I don't know. Of course, I've met some commissioners of the, out of, for instance, like this, I can't take his name, he's in, in Mississippi, even in Mississippi. Uh, they have curtailed solitary confinement. He is, he's sort of like the director of, of correction. I was with him in, 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 in Chicago a year or so ago, and uh, he had curtailed solitary confinement uh, himself. He is one of, one of the few. Uh, there have been even some governors, as you know, who have, you know, uh, eliminated, you know, uh, you know, that, you know, uh, for as far as executing everybody in, in their prison. So there have been a, a few, but it's, it's just not quite enough. Uh, uh, but the idea is this, it's okay to have these folks on board, but the people to get on board, uh, the people who, uh, who are affected most about prison. I think these are the ones, and that is the majority of people who have no, uh, you know, the only talk that they have with prison is uh, they know a loved one, or one of their loved ones is in prison, or they know someone in prison. So we have uh, I think he was there, I, I'll give you later, but he had his hand up initially. Of the so, yeah, so I want to say first, I think your talk, and also your book, is really moving, and I really recommend your book also. But I want to ask you, maybe first more personally, how did you survive after 29 years of solitary? Both, how do you maintain your humanity, your mind? Because I can't even imagine 29 years of solitary. So maybe you could talk about that. I know it's a personal one. And maybe secondly, what kind of movement you know, do you know about or do you tell people about, about movements against solitary confinement, you know, nationally, internationally? Because a lot of people, I consider, I'm sure you do a form of torture, and sort of the movement against thought is fun. You could add a little more about that. So first and the, the personal one, how you survive, anything you could tell us about that, and then second, the movement around solitary confinement. Yeah, thanks for the question, Rob. Well, you know, people ask me this all the time, how do you uh, survive? I, I like to say this first and foremost. I think the thing that, 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 that gave me what I needed to survive uh, was I had a political foundation. I, so yeah, I, I initially stated that I was, you know, a rebel. You know, I didn't have a political foundation. I had a cause, but I did not uh, had a consciousness, a political consciousness. I think it was when they sent me to prison. Uh, it was this newfound consciousness that allowed me to uh, to kind of weather, kind of weather the storm a bit. But I, in saying this, I'm, I'm also careful when, when people make the presumption or the other assumption that uh, you put it nicely. Some people say, well, why aren't you crazy? You know, why aren't you insane? Well, I, I, I look at them and I say, hold up, wait a minute. I did not tell you I wasn't crazy or insane. I did not, I did not say that. And my point is that you, you don't get dipped in waste and not come up smelling. That's right. You know, it's impossible. So prison impacted me. It, it, it affected me greatly. And I, I really did not realize until, you know, because I'm constantly evolving. I, I've lost some time, but I've caught up with, with some things. Uh, you know, I was acclimated to short distances. And even right now, I was in a six by nine by 12 foot cell and uh, being acclimated to short distances like that, it is not good for the one There are scientists which bring me to a point of uh, you want to know who has gotten on board and against them. We have uh, AAES, I think American Association of Scientists Against Solitary Confinement. I was in Chicago a couple months ago uh, and while I was on the panel with a bunch of neuro uh, neurologists and scientists, uh, Dr. Gresham and a whole bunch of other people that, that I know. Uh, psychiatrists who are just uh, 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 solitary confinement. We've had Amnesty International. When I say Amnesty International, I'm not just talking about Amnesty International. I'm talking about Amnesty International, uh, England, France, Belgium, Portugal. Uh, been to those parliaments, have talked to those people. These people have gotten on board, and Amnesty International has really gotten on board. 
or uh, Amnesty International has done, and I know a lot of people have been against Amnesty International, which is true. I mean, that's, that's, that's it's okay, but in our case, Amnesty has done something that's unprecedented. Uh, they don't usually focus on, uh, they focus on the inhumanity of your condition and being confined. But they don't usually focus on the innocent or the guilt. But in our case, they have focused on the innocent or the guilt of Harmon Albert and myself. And not only that, by the way, some of you, if you haven't seen it or heard it yet, there's a movie added to the movie in the land of the free that you made. By the way, we have several movies. Uh, some of you have seen them, some of you have probably have not seen them, but we've, 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 we've set them out. We have, uh, you know, uh, movies, you know, <coughs> You know, depicting you know just what uh, uh, solitary confinement is, and what and the people who have gotten on board uh, to 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 aid us, and we've had legislative hearings again with regards to that, and we are still here. Even now, uh, many colleges. This is not the only place. Uh, this and it's good to see uh, a lot of colleges doing the same thing that's being done here. But it, it it's happening all across the country. So we managed to get people on board decrying the practice of solitary confinement. With scientists on board, American scientists and new lot new 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 surgeons, neurologists and would not point out that, you know, what prison do to people is dehumanizing long term confinement is, then I, I think we made some headway because ten years ago you could not find even in the mainstream media, you find them talking about prison now in solitary confinement because they have begun to see uh, the thing that we have been saying for years, that prison, uh, you know, the way prison is being run, we have to rethink prison. And there's a post, I think, around here saying, rethinking uh, of prison. And I think we have to do it. People are rethinking uh, of prisons all, all, all across the country, which is, which is a good thing, and, and which comes about as a direct result of, of what people like yourself, like you, uh, you know, uh, like myself have been doing, uh, you know, for some time. And like I said, uh, it's good to see because um, on and not, I say 10 years ago, but uh, just five years ago, you, you, the people who are on board now, uh, uh, they weren't on board. Um, they were leaning that way, but I think they have uh, finally got it. They see that uh, uh, the thing that we have been saying was true. And, uh, and, and they are having some impact because, uh, I mean, it's catching. It's like uh, the pebbles in the pond, you know, uh, gaining a uh, ripple. Uh, the wave, you know, um, you throw a pebble in the pond, you get a ripple, and people have been throwing pebbles in the pond, and we haven't seen the wave effect of these pebbles being thrown in the pond, um, and, and this is what it's about. And so, yeah, there have been some, there have been some impact. Uh, uh, we have been impacted in, 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 in getting attention and getting the focus on prison and getting people to redefine prison, getting prison, people to see prison in another light. Don't get me wrong. Uh, they may not never see prison the way I see prison. You know, I was confined to prison unjustly, and my thoughts are extreme. My, uh, about prison, my thoughts are extreme. But there are many people who don't have, who never experienced the thing that I did. They have their own way of doing it. I don't, I don't expect them to have the same, you know, identical outlook that I have against prison. But the, if I could get the attention, or we could get the attention to just focus on prison, that part of prison itself, seeing that being tantamount to slavery, when you really look at prison, if we are able to do this, then I think we have time for something. And I think we have been able to do this. Uh, and I think it was, you were the next one? Next, I think. I'm sorry if I missed it. There's a few other people on the way. Okay. Okay. I'll let you call them. And let me get her and I'll let you. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't hear them all. Right. But, okay. say it again, please. You know, in this country we have civil law and then we have criminal law. And um, I, I, I've always found that, like, I've never understood that because I, I understand where you're coming from. I think with, with, with the criminal law, I think 
goes to criminal court. Um, and um, you were, I, I've never quite understood, like you mentioned, um, the way they, the way they up the sentence for, with, for, for burglary. Uh, first it was 15 years, and then it was 30 years, and then they put the 60 and the 90. And I know, you know, I've heard of other times where someone, someone gets 25 years to life for just for conspiring to, to rob a convenience store. And then you've got these white collar criminals, you know, in, in Wall Street or whatever, who are, who are robbing billions, and they, they don't even go to jail. And so there's a, there is this, so you see this tremendous disconnect, and I'm wondering what, who, who actually makes, who, who is the one that decides to, to up those prison sentences, like we were talking about for, 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 for armed robbery or whatever? Okay. You know, all of, many people think that the judge is not a court. Is, is, thanks for the question. Uh, they believe that the court are the, um, are the ones who, who make laws. Uh, the judges do not make the law. Uh, they interpret the law. The legislative body, Congress, they are the ones who write the law. And they are the ones who are responsible for it. And by the way, it was not burglary, it was robbery. Burglary has increased too. It has replicated. At one time, the max you got for burglary was nine years. Uh, you could get 46 years or 50 years for a burglary now. Uh, but that is because the legislative intent, they have a prerogative. Uh, they call it the legislative prerogative, and their prerogative is to make laws the right laws. And they are, uh, but it is up to the judge to implement these laws. You know, it's different as they call it. Yeah, you, know, you, got, uh, you got different branches. You got the legislative branch, the judicial, uh, the judicial branch, and the executive branch. You got, you know, three levels of government. And these are, uh, they all function differently in, in different ways, but they sort of wipe the hands and clean the hands of, of each other. Uh, you have, the, like I said, the legislative branch, uh, the one who writes the law, uh, judicial branch of the one that implements the law. Uh, uh, so it's the state legislature that, 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 that decides to, to keep um, increasing the sentences? For the it's members? because it's a mood. It's a mood. Ronald Reagan came out with the law, you know, um, tough law mentality during his tenure, uh, and it went People went crazy with that. Um, they decided to to uh, to, to uh, not be what they call color criminals anymore. Tough on law, tough on crime. Uh, they never really was tough on real crime. When they say tough on crime, they really was talking about petty crime. They weren't talking about the white collar crime that you speak about. Um, I mean, people can, you know. Because white collar crime is not criminal. It's civil, isn't it? White collar crime is criminal. All, uh, all crimes, if, when you want to look at it, even civil or criminal, when, when you live in a, if you, your, condition in, your condition in prison uh, comes under civil, the condition. You cannot, if you're in prison, you cannot challenge your sentence or conviction under the civil statute. You have to file a, 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 against the conditions of your confinement. If you want to file against the criminal, aspect of your case, you have to go to uh, uh, district court, the court in which uh, you were sentenced from, um, that you know you were found guilty for, uh, you were charged in. Uh, that's dealing with the criminal aspect of it. Uh, they are two different, and they, they're, you know, they operate actually on different principles. They're, they're written by the same and brought into law by the same legislative branch, uh, but the application of civil law is different from uh, criminal law. But it doesn't make it less moral just because there is a difference in it. Uh, because uh, uh, our law, our case, my being kept in solitary confinement for 29 years, or my 31 years, it required a civil resolution. And this is what we did. We filed a civil lawsuit against the state of Louisiana, which is pending now for 13, 14 years, maybe long, uh, maybe 15 years, gone on 16 or so, sometime in 98 when, when we initially filed that suit. And, and the Fifth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeal uh, has uh, 
we have determined that they uh, will hear our case and should go to trial sometime in June or July this year. I say that, you know, uh, with the knowledge that we were supposed to go to trial last year in June, and the year before that in June, and the year before that. But I do think the fact that we did file uh, 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 against, you know, cruel and unusual punishment, and the code had ruled that my 29 years constituted uh, cruel and unusual punishment. But the United States Supreme Court has not ruled that yet. And I'm telling them, unless they do it, uh, they don't want to set a precedent because every court in the land will have to go to the Supreme Court, make a ruling, and become a landmark decision. And every court, that is federal, state, uh, whatever court, uh, even civil courts will have to agree with what uh, uh, the United States Supreme uh, Court says. But the precedent has not been set yet. And uh, in our case, we intend to set that precedent, and not only do we want to raise the ball for people in, 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 with criminal cases, because our case is a double whammy. Not only were we all convicted for crimes that neither of us committed, they know we did not uh, uh, commit these crimes, but we were held in solitary confinement, unjustly, uh, uh, you know, uh, based on a, a presumption uh, because uh, 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 of the prison administration feeling that uh, we could not or should not be placed in, in general population because we were, quote, uh, their, their, their words were threats to security. Cool, so we have a question. Uh, I would like to know why he pleaded guilty to the murder in order to trial. Okay, thanks for the good question. <laughs> I did not plead guilty to murder. Not not I did not plead guilty. Not you. Not members of three that was charged with killing a prison guard? Neither one of them uh, pled guilty to that. Yes. Albert Woodfox never pled guilty. His case is overturned. Hunter Wallace never pled guilty to this. That was Chester Jackson, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the guy who pled guilty and got a 25 year sentence running into his 75 years. Chester Jackson was a snitch. He was a prison snitch. He had been to prison three times. They wanted to convict someone for the crime, so they told Chester Jackson, I think they induced him to plead guilty, even though the fact is this, that Chester Jackson also said that Gilbert Montague had took part in it, but also testified differently. They didn't believe uh, Chester Jackson in that. Chester Jackson did not testify against Herman Wallace. Woody, I mean against Alvin Woodfox. They went to trial differently. Uh, Chester Jackson testified against Herman Wallace, including him, and he'll say Herman Wallace, and he had took part in this, despite the fact that all forensic evidence showed differently. They told Chester Jackson, and this is for all rats, uh, for all snitches who should, should know better. Yeah. They told Chester Jackson that if he did what he did, that he would get out of prison. Well, Chester Jackson died 20 years ago in prison. He suddenly developed, you know, he admitted to, to this. And, and, and he would have did 25 years on 75, and they told him he was going to make parole. He never left prison. He's buried in Point Lookout, number one, in Angola State Prison. So he was the one that 